The basis of our governments being the opinion of the people, the very first object should be to keep that right. And were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. Thomas Jefferson, 1787. The Constitution, that once venerated and fundamental set of rules that American society chose to adhere to in self-governance, enshrined exactly one commercial enterprise by name. The press was guaranteed the right to perpetually operate and expose the depth of inevitable corruption that the founders knew would be inherent to government. They believed that if the people, via the press, had the right and duty to expose and call out the sinister behavior that power and money would inevitably create, that the Republic would be free to chart its course in a vigilant guard of liberty. Yet as we stand here 234 years past that ratified set of principles based on natural law, the press that Jefferson felt so imperative to the vitality of the country has become an apparatus of the very state they were intended to restrain. They find nearly every opportunity to collude with the powerful, to eliminate dissent and opposing viewpoints, to retain their power, purse, and prestige. Their integrity is vapid, lost is the art of discovery, and the thrill of dismantling the corruption of the state. They have ceased in their operations and role as noble mantle bearers of built-in competition to government, and instead, play their bit part of a trustworthy operation who thrives on making the most of a theater of adversarial relationship to the ruling class. They're dishonest now about how they play the game. They pretend to be the neutral party, but behind the scenes, they do the bidding they are asked to do. A quick revisit to the Twitter files or the hyperventilating about weapons of mass destruction or 9-11 and it's clear to see to anyone willing to delve into self-honesty that today's press is not the vehicle that can be the fierce guardian of liberty. They are disingenuous about polls, elections, candidates of the opposition, their advertisers, government, medicine, the military, and the functionality of the United States. Yet they continue to receive our cultural pass and trust simply because of what they once were. They set up the stories to be most favorable to the government and the advertisers. And if that seems hyperbolic and oversimplified, consider that they told the citizens virtually nothing honest about COVID. The overhyped insurrection on January 6th, election integrity, vaccines, or about the border. They staged the set, then spend all possible energy towards the fooling. So perhaps it's time to be honest with ourselves. Nothing works in America, including the venerated instruments that we continue to rely upon. The press has failed us, and their operations are a farcical facsimile of what was hoped for. But there's likely a reason Jefferson started his thoughts the way he did. The basis of our governments being the opinion of the people the very first object should be to keep that right. It's up to us to be our own press. Our devoted dedication to laziness and short form sound bites has left us here. And only our rethinking of what our voices are designed for by inherent nature can change the trajectory of the powerful's oppression. The moment demands your own voice of liberty. Tell the story around you, turn off the television, write letters to the editors, or better yet, use the tools available to you to make your own newspapers. Be, as Mark Stein says, the last photocopier in the woods, telling the truth and exposing the world they present, while simultaneously creating the world we are destined for in liberty.